Today we're in Malmö uh, at the Lighting Conference. As part of the Lighting Metropolis, we've organized a two-day Lighting Conference uh, where we've uh, gathered um, some of the key actors, uh, both in the region here in uh, eastern Denmark and southern Sweden, but also from other places around Europe. It's about to bring 30% of all growth in the 21st century. It will come from lighting technologies and related technologies. We're here today in Malmö. Um, because there's a big conference that brings together also cities, lighting designers, research industry. Well, lighting has always been a process of innovation. The reason why we're meeting with other people from other disciplines in the lighting industry at this conference is because the lighting industry is undergoing a paradigm shift at the moment. So what is the real impact and how are we going to respond to it and what should the approach be? Light is fundamental to the social infrastructure, so it's not just about beautifying the place, a building or structure, but it's also encouraged social interaction cohesion to build communities. It's the right light in the right place at the right time is what we really need to be considering. Well, in, in my opinion, it's important to meet uh, and uh, cross the borders, as we do in Denmark and Sweden in this project especially, but also with the other disciplines, because we, have, we know our own subjects very well, but sometimes you have to come together and collaborate. My name is uh, Kristin Bredal. I'm from Oslo, or I'm from the north of Norway, but I am the founder of uh, and chief designer of Senisk Lighting Design and we specialize in uh, urban lighting strategies. My name is Sarah and I work as a project manager within business development at uh, Kraftingen, which is a local energy company in the city of Lund. So when you realize that nature is a huge library, then it changes everything around you. More than 80% of uh, Earth's inhabitants, uh, biodiversity and ourselves, are actually affected by light pollution, causing a lot of different issues. We feel really privileged to have been a part of this lighting metropolis where we could cooperate with the universities and the industries in a way that we haven't really done before. When we're making this kind of project, then it, normally we take products off the shelf and then install them in a way. But here we really got to work together and get the nice ideas from the universities about what kind of means and what kind of instruments we can use in order to create a, a really good and strong project. I would say probably 10 years ago when I first heard about this term LED revolution, I couldn't believe it. It's just another light source, longer life, more efficient being shaped in a form that replaces what a bulb looks like. What kind of revolution? Now I actually got it. I think the knowledge of uh, the importance of lighting design is really growing and it's crucial for, for the future. Not only the new techniques, but also how to design the light. It's so, much, so, so important. There are areas within uh, lighting that we have not yet uh, seen. I believe that it's actually at this point of time it's the most exciting uh, for lighting industries because technology is, ex is accelerating at the moment. It's, it's never only lighting, you know, colors and materials and lighting is so connected. The ways that the lighting can be used has dramatically increased and this is all going I think towards the, the sustainability for the city. So less CO2 emissions, uh, less budget, uh, also investment in lighting, uh, but better quality of lighting. And especially in the end, we're all focusing on to better quality of life. But it's obviously very difficult. Again, it's up to us now. The future is now. It's also about really taking action together, putting together projects, putting together research initiatives and inspiring each other.